Hi everyone, Anthony Turnham, professional architectural photographer here and in this video I'm going to see if I can fix up some of these interior architectural shots that I took just the other day. As you can see I'm using Lightroom. Now these are pretty much straight out of camera at the moment just with some minor changes and I'm just trying to get these back to the client as quickly as possible. If I just reset this and then press Ctrl Z to undo it you'll see that this has just got my basic corrections which are really really heavy handed in terms of dropping the highlights, boosting the shadows but what I want to do is just have a really quick way to have a base point that I can work with and get something back to the client. Now one of the biggest transformational things for me actually well there's a few let me just go over those real quick you have your profile corrections which uh, this is the big one enable profile correction click that and that will get rid of all your distortion your barrel distortion or pin cushioning uh, so that correction there is vitally important the next one I don't have automated because it is specific to each photo but what I like to do is a guided transformation so basically we're looking for correcting those verticals and I know there's an automated vertical tool that you can click on but I prefer to do this myself and if I'm looking at a one point perspective I want to make sure that my horizontals are also corrected see how I use that line in the tile there and then I'll use this nice break line across the ceiling here and I'm not even going to be like super accurate you see my zoomed in shot there or my zoomed in area I'm not even concerned with getting that exactly on the money on both ends I mean I'm pretty close but I just want to get this back turned around quickly to the client so the next step that I normally do after I've corrected those verticals and horizontals is I'll just come into the local masking tool I often use a radial mask and I'm going to brighten this area for example and I'm just going to basically guess my settings just boost some shadows boost the exposure same in the kitchen I could have duplicated what I'd just done but we'll just uh, we'll go again and the fact that the colors aren't particularly accurate at the moment we've got some orange going on over here because of the interior lighting the sky is blown out here I'm really not concerned about that at this point I mean I could drop the highlights here all of a sudden you see we get a bit more detail out there but this is good enough for me to send this back to the client for an, what I call an initial proofing basically they're going to go if they got this they'd be like oh don't really like that doesn't look very professional uh, this correction we've just done again it's not fantastic by any means but you'll see from my selection here this is one of 14 I have a whole selection of bracketed shots of this exact photo so I have the very dark stuff so I can bring back the exposure outside right the way to the highlights where if I really want to bring back uh, detail in these deep shadows up here I can do that I've then turned all the interior lighting on and basically done exactly the same again run through my bracketed exposure and so I've got the option to introduce internal lighting or if I want to and I've also got the nice clean color balance of just using the exterior lighting here so everything's of a neutral color balance none of that tungsten coming through but anyway all of that compositing work is what I'll do once the client comes back to me and says we like this photo and we want to use it so just for now let me show you how I'll quickly get these turned around so there we go we're going to straighten that angle there I'm going to look for a vertical coming through here so I'll use the chair leg and the top of that bit and we're pretty close there and again we're at a one point perspective here basically everything's receding off into the distance so I'm going to make sure that my horizontal is pretty close and I'll also I'll always try and find the horizontals that are closest to the edge same for the verticals as well the verticals that I choose will be the closest points to the edge so here we go we've got one here oh I've already done one over there so <laughs> so pay attention Anthony here we go let's brighten up the kitchen area here but at the same time we're going to control those highlights so they don't get too bleached out there we go and if you're concerned by the color balance you can just do a little correction just by dropping the temperature down there you can get quite specific with that if you want but I'm not too worried about that at this point speed is the aim of the game here dropping my highlights again boost the shadows over there and if I want a little bit of detail or highlight just in this little corner here I can do that as well pretty rough and ready just do it through Lightroom's local adjustments there we go if you don't want all the uh, orange on the floor here again you can play with the color temperature that's one way to do it but in this case I think a better way would just to be grabbing the saturation and just reduce saturation and we can press our backslash key just to see a quick 
before and after. It's not a true before and after. This has already had that rough edit that I showed you before with these basic settings already applied. So this is our initial import. Our import settings have already done this for us automatically. And then I've just corrected it a little further. If you're working for a real estate agent, I believe this would be good enough to go to press for them to put up online. But I'm working for architects, high-end architects, high-end builders, and I need to create a really polished finished piece. That's why I have 24 <laughs> different frames, which are a combination of those lights being on, lights being off. This is a flashed version that I did with the Godox AD600. Man, I love that light. It's such a good purchase. I'll put a link to that one if you guys are wanting to get yourself a really powerful light, which is way better than using speed lights. Just allows you to shoot at ISO 100 rather than what a lot of people suggest, which is ISO 400, and that gives your flashes more power. But when we're doing this kind of work, you want to be working with as clean a file as possible. So if you can be at ISO 100 or 64, which uh, my D850 shoots at, that's where you want to be. So let's uh, let's just correct this one. Hopefully you're getting the idea now. It's just a guided correction. This one's not too uh, out of whack anyway, but just by correcting those things, um, the horizontals, it, this, that'll be a big one for this particular image. And I might even just use this table, the bottom of the table right here. So we wanna make sure that's nice and straight and pop just like that. We have a nice straight image. If I just show you that sort of before and after we've done that correction. And no, I'm not using a tilt shift lens. I'm just using a basic 16 to 35 millimeter zoom. That's the way I like to work. And no one has ever complained. A client has never questioned it. I don't see a reason of dropping three, four thousand dollars on one of those lenses. Personally, I just I don't need to. I like my 16 to 35. So if it ain't broke, why try and fix it? So I'm just going to darken down this carpet area here where we have a lot of light bleeding in. And let's just put one big fat exposure boost through the room here. Yeah, we don't want to go too far. Something like that will do. And I did shoot this very wide, maybe 16 mil wide. So let's, uh, I, I think that's too wide. So personally, what I'd like to do is just crop that in a little bit. And maybe we don't need to see the carpet as much in the foreground here either. We could go from this pillow here. And I just want a hint of what's going on outside with this lovely area under here. And there we go. And if you want to see your very first original, just hit the reset button. So that's our original. And I'll press Control Z to undo that. And there we go. That's what I'm sending through to the client as that initial proofing stage. Uh, now this image here, we can basically borrow from that last one. They are so similar, these two images. But if you see this initial one that I shot here, the sun was covered by the cloud and that really bugs me when you're on a shoot and it's cloudy day because the lighting conditions are continually changing on you so just seconds later the sun came out and we've got a different kind of dynamic to the image so what i'm going to do is just control click on the second one with this one highlighted first and i'm just going to click sync dot 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 have everything selected and synchronize that look from one to another so now when we jump back to this image, we have that one pretty much corrected as well. I'm just going to deselect them so that I'm just working for this one and I'm just going to brighten it up ever so slightly. Moving on to this image, I do believe this is one that was particularly problematic when I first brought it in. It was very, very angled with the camera. And so what I did was I've already just corrected the verticals just to make sure that it was going to work. Because if you do too much of an extreme tilt up or down with a 16 to 35, you are certainly going to have to work harder to correct that and it can look a little distorted. So if I reset this one, for example, and just show you that initial one, look at that tilt we've got going down completely undeliverable but using that technique i've shown you of the guided transform tool there if i press ctrl z that will jump back to our version here and everything's nice and straight now it's currently half time in a football game that i'm enjoying watching so i am going to just do a couple more finish the video there and i'll carry on 45 minutes later after hopefully my team has a victory Another option you've got is come into the transform tool and you can actually try the automated section. And sometimes like for this example, it does a pretty good job. But I also think I want to 
sort out the um, horizontals here as well. So I'm just going to come to the, well, full. We could try full. And that does give us an indication of what will happen if we sort out the horizontals. And in this case, this is too much of a correction. It's totally warped the side here. So I'm just going to come back to this auto. And while I don't really like having the horizontals just tapering off just slightly, I think we need to be sticking with this because we want things to look more authentic. We don't want to just uh, be stretching things out. That just looks really un unsightly. I'm just going to bring down the exposure outside just ever so slightly and I'll drop those highlights too. Now there's not enough detail in the sky here to bring this back so that's why I shoot some darker frames as well so I've got all of that data available to me. I also don't really dig on this whole orange vibe we've got going on here so I'm just going to desaturate that just slightly as well. And we are looking pretty wide here so what I might do is we know the bed's there, we know we've got an exterior view out of here so I'm just going to bring this in just slightly. I feel like this is still very wide as well but to be honest I'm going to leave this just because I think this strip lighting here, this is a guest bedroom, I feel like that's a nice feature. And just out here we may just bring up the light level just outside on this beautiful brickwork we've got going on. That's a really cool feature there, it's tying in the exterior of the home where these um, schist stones exist outside and it's bringing them into the home. So that's a really nice tie through, I love that. The next images, in my opinion, aren't super exciting, but one I really did love was this bathroom here, which needs quite a lot of work. There we go, it's loaded up, and I shot this at a really low angle, and I had to tilt up, and this was all deliberate, and this looks ghastly right now, but let's just see whether I can fix this up. The reason I came so low, much lower than I normally would, I'd normally be with my camera around the height of the top of this basin here, or somewhere around there, but I came lower because I wanted to see the fact that this mirror and the strip lighting continues below the cabinetry. I thought that was a really cool little feature. So anyway, now we've got to correct that. We'll just jump to that transform section, come to guided, and we're going to use the side of the mirror or thereabouts and just bring one of those down there. And now let's use this line down the side here and we should be pretty much close there. And now we're going to click constrain crop and we're getting a little warped particularly at the top so i'm not too worried if i lose some of the top of this photo so we'll just bring that crop in a little tighter just so that we can get the floor in and we're going to expand it to the right here as well see how we've got the light just here i don't like putting anything right on the edge of the frame so if i can crop below that i will we've got the edge of the window here as well i don't want to sort of insinuate this window might just be going on forever so if i can just frame that window there by putting the frame in i will do let's double click that and see how we're looking and from here we can always come in and just adjust our crop i actually feel like i want to go a little higher um, and bearing in mind what i said about that light we can just use our spot healing or um yeah, spot healing, we'll use that. And we'll just make that about the right size for the light. Click once and that will be gone. If you feel like things are getting a little bit stretched, you can play with the aspect of your photo as well. So this may be a slightly more realistic view if I was to drop the aspect down like that. And that does give us the option for a slightly different crop, which I'll do, just widen the crop there. Now we could look at potentially including the whole mirror. That's cool. Now let's just play with the colors slightly. Let's just desaturate the orange. While I do love that lovely orange glow, I just don't want it to be too in your face. And we've got a lot of blue light coming through here. So we could drop the saturation of that slightly just to neutralize it. And if we want to just darken that area, we can do that with the luminance value. Or what I probably prefer to do is just draw another one of those radial gradients and just drop the exposure slightly there and let's boost it inside here. Let's go something like that. I could go as far as recoloring the flowers with radial gradient, but I'm just really not interested in that. So let's just see where we've come from. We've basically gone from this unusable warped photo that's actually quite underexposed to if I press Control Z, there we go. That's a nice transformation that's good enough to send back to our client, at least for the initial proofing. Now, depending on the client that you're working for and the fee that you're charging, this may be good enough to send it through exactly as it is like this. But my clients want the very best from me and personally, I ask that of myself as well. 
And so I know that I have 14 different images here to utilize so that I can bring out the very best from this photo. So I might have this dark image here where I can bring some of this detail and luminance value for the window and also the reflection on the floor. At the other end of the spectrum, if I wanna bring more detail into these shadows here, I've got all of this for the detail on the wall. And then the other thing that I've got access to is another set of images where I've turned the lights on here. So I've got the spots. And if the spotlights were something that I wanted to introduce, a little pin of highlighting, I can do that. It's really good to have those options to utilize in your post-production and your compositing. Anyway, the football's kicked off, so I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you guys later. Hope that's been helpful. If it has, leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a little comment. Let me know what you thought. And of course, if you're interested in architectural photography, real estate photography, post-production like that, hit the subscribe button. And I am out of here for now. Bye for now, guys.